I've always looked up to him and I even said it when we were dating that like, I really look up to you and <laughs> <laughs> I did it's like, I was like, oh, it's like I'm an old man <laughs> you are you're six years older than me what do you mean Hi guys, uh, welcome out to Real Relationships Q&A. My name's Courtney. My name is Francis. So we got it right this week. Um, and so, um, sorry it's a bit late. We really appreciate all the um, comments and everything that we've been getting. So uh, I wanna jump straight in to the question. So we've got, we've basically, the last questions that we've got left, we've broken them into two sections. So we've got this one and then Saturday we'll do um, another one mm -hmm. and then we would have gone through all the questions the first one and at the end of this video we'll talk about some books that we recommend people have been asking us about what books so we we'll recommend some books at the end and then we'll try to do maybe more of this mm. um, each month maybe yeah. if you if you want to see that let us know all right so the first question is if you had to choose um, one what is your favorite memory together Mm. Uh, well, my favourite memory of us is our very first holiday. We went to America. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got married 2004. We went away 2005 um, to Florida. I believe. Yeah, it was in Florida. Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like for me, it was one. <laughs> had so much memories, guys. Trust me, I could go on and on about that holiday. It was mad funny, um, but. <laughs> that was one of my best holidays we've had. We've had so many great times. We've been mad for many 17 years. So there've been others, but that one I would say is my favorite. What about you? Yeah, I would say going away together. Mm -hmm. I think those have been our best memories when we're away and uh, just where's, having a good time. Where's your favorite? Um, I don't think that one is my favorite. <laughs> what was your favorite? <laughs> I remember that one because we, we, we didn't have much money that one. That one was a bit rough, Nick. Uh, it was, uh, That's why it was we didn't so really funny. save for it, did we? We no. just kind of we got paid that month and went on a holiday. Yeah. So um, That's we, why it was we, so we funny. We were walking everywhere and there was a few other things, but um, we, sh we won't talk about them. Yeah, but it was good. It was a good time. Was Obviously, good time. you liked it. That's the main thing. But yeah, definitely going away uh, mm -hmm. for, for us, for me, traveling with my wife, spending time together, going to nice places. Mm -hmm. So that would definitely be my favorite memories together your greatest tip for a great marriage what's your greatest tip for a great my marriage? greatest tip for a great marriage other than all the spiritual stuff because we know that already don't take yourself too seriously and be willing to be flexible be willing just to be flexible i think love is being flexible with others people that take themselves too seriously in marriage and they're not flexible enough they're just very hard to live with and they don't enjoy it themselves. They don't mm. enjoy the marriage themselves. Because you're like, this is how I was, this is how I like it, this is how it is. I think in anything in life, if you're too like that, then you know, mm -hmm. what Jesus says, that's what we've got to do. When Jesus tells us to do something, we've got to do it. Mm -hmm. But you're not Jesus. So we got to be a bit more flexible with what you want yeah. and the way you want it. And um, No, I agree with that. You've got to be, you've got to be flexible. But I would say, as well to add to what my husband was saying love um love and respect i think that's another great tip for a great marriage because i feel for me i've always respected my husband before we even got married always yeah always respected you like mm. i've always looked up to him and i even said it when we were dating that like, i really look up to you and <laughs> <laughs> i did it's like, I was like, oh, it's like i'm an old man <laughs> you are you're six years older than me what do you is, mean is that, is that it's like I'm an old man. No, I mean, I look up to you, I'm very... You. Yeah, because you're very... The, the way you love, the passion you have for Christ, it it, it really um, inspired me. And that's what I've always prayed for in a man. And I said I want uh, um, a husband that will love Christ more than you love me. And I feel that's a lot in you, 100%. I've already said that in the previous video. Um, so I said love and respect the way I respected my husband and the way I respect my husband. He loves me and he's cared for me and he's showed me that because that's what a woman wants she wants to be loved she wants to be nurtured and but how can she get that if she's not respecting her husband or her, her spouse how can she get that men want respect yeah definitely you know yeah, yeah. if i disrespect you every minute that would be um you know as a as, as a man i don't know that's something i've 
yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I definitely say that makes sense. Love yeah. and respect. Love they're, and they're, respect, yeah. They're, 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 they're very two good things. If you can, if the man can love the woman and the woman can respect yeah. the man, obviously both of them are love and both of them have elements of respect. Yes. You know, both women need respect, men need respect. Yeah. Men need love, women need love. But those two things, they manifest themselves in different ways. Someone <clears> just called us, so if I dissed you, <laughs> sorry, it was for a good cause. <laughs> what are your thoughts on your spouse being friends with church members of the opposite sex, texting, talking on the phone, etc.? Hmm. Good question. My opinion is there's no friendships. I'm your friend. Next. <laughs> no joking no no i'm real i feel um you know when i got married to my husband that was like i'll have brothers and sisters in christ i know a lot of guys and um ladies in the rather high church in our mother church and you know they are friends we speak to them but they're not like i wouldn't call them up they wouldn't call me it's not that kind of relationship but for me my best friend is my husband so i don't need any male friendship anymore I, I cut that out of my life and it's kept me for you know these 16 years and i don't need any i guess we're talking about best friends things here, yeah I mean, like I, I don't need any best friend you yeah, are my best friend yeah and i'm your best friend <laughs> you just told you told <laughs> you're telling me that yeah, yeah. thank you this is what i'm <laughs> yeah i would agree no, I, would, I, would, I would agree um <laughs> What are your thoughts on your spouse being friends with... Uh, the so my thoughts, and that's what you've asked me, yeah. what, what our thoughts are, yeah. is that um, if you have a, uh, a someone in the church who is the opposite sex and they're your best friend, mm -hmm. usually it can lead to mixed messages. That's so true. the person gets the wrong idea. So uh, that person can start to build an emotional tie with you or that person can start to think that there's something odd about you and why are you their best friend and you're married mm. um that if they let, let's say that other person is married what does their spouse think because um yeah i wouldn't want you to be best friends with my wife uh bro so um then there's the 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 element of uh so many times these things do lead to the wrong uh place mm -hmm. i mean let me not gla gla glaze over it it leads to sin so many times yeah. i've been saved over nearly 25 years yeah, amazing. I've, and, and i've seen so many people destroy their marriage their uh, uh testimony and their relationship with god mm -hmm. because he was just too close mm -hmm. and um everybody that i've ever met that said oh no it won't affect me it's affected them yeah. everybody every single person in 25 years mm -hmm. if i was doing a case study on this thing i would say this thing is toxic mm -hmm. it doesn't work no. uh there's always going to be someone watching this that disagrees and that no i can handle it and so i would be like yeah go on with your bad self <laughs> if that's that's what you want to do it's what you want to do but which you've asked what are our thoughts on this, this? our opinion and this would, this would yeah this would be our opinion and i'd be very very um if you are watching this and somebody you're dating or married uh is is uh, well if you are watching this and someone um that you're dating feels it's okay to do this i'd be very careful i would be mindful i'd have a conversation 100 percent. okay what advice would you give to encourage those who are dating engaged in this current current pandemic Hmm, that's a good question. Um, because for me, I would say this is going to be a difficult time for a lot of us. I understand that. But I feel you may have even an advantage than we, like a lot of people probably never had when they were first dating into marriage. Because what I mean by that is, um, you know, you get so caught up in oh, what I'm going to do with the, your your the person you're dating you're going out you're going this place and you're all caught up in the ambience of everything but not really getting to know the person that you're actually going to get married to so i feel sometimes this time is you're stripped away from everything it's just that person you're with and you're getting to know them on a deeper level that you probably would have never had before if you were you know constantly oh let's go out let's go out let's go out let's go out um 
you're gonna have many of time to be going out when you're married but i feel this time i feel you may get you might even have an advantage a lot of people you know what do you feel yeah i think same but basically what you said i think yeah there's challenges because we have a certain model of dating yeah and we want to try and keep to that model uh because of culture it's the way everybody date in the world we've seen movies programs mm -hmm. books m uh, music this is how you do it yeah. so that, that that's the challenge i would say there's if you do get married to that person you've got a lifetime of romance and uh, dating is to find out whether that person is compatible and if that's the will of God for your life. So I don't see how a, the, the pandemic may have challenges, yeah. but I don't see how it disqualifies you from finding God's will that's for your true. life. God is bigger than a pandemic. And um, so that's what I would say to that. Maybe you just got to be a bit more patient yeah. in this. It may take a bit longer. There may be things that you've got to bear with, but love is patient. That's what mm. the Bible speaks about. Lust can't wait. But love, love is patient. That's very good. So that's what I would say. Great. Is it normal that when you start dating someone, you see a whole different side to them? For example, not as spiritual as you thought or... Others think. Oh, others think. Okay, so um, I'm going to go two, hmm. two sides with this. This is what I would say. I'll go two sides. Interesting. Because, um definitely when you see someone from a distance you like them you, you hang out you go fellowships you meet them and then you um you start dating them you are going to see more weaknesses than you did from a distance mm. so you're going to see things how they're um under pressure how they when they're tired how are they when you know stress is on them so you you are going to see their weaknesses because human beings are weak that's that's just the, the that's the thing um and that doesn't disqualify someone because you're you're getting to know them mm. um i think what you need to look for is are those weaknesses um uh, red flags to bigger problems mm. are those th are those weaknesses things that you just cannot you're not willing to work with and you believe the bible has showed you you shouldn't be willing to work with mm -hmm. but i do think that if you get to know somebody and you're spending more time with them, you will see a deeper side to them, another side. And it doesn't mean that that's, that discredits them or disqualifies them because they're not exactly what I saw from a distance. Right. Um, now, let me go to the other side. So that's the kind of the positive side. The negative side, if this person is living in contradiction mm. to what their public persona or testimony or reputation or ministry is, if they are doing things that contradict that public persona, that is when it becomes dangerous because that is is hypocrisy. Mm. Or so when you said here about not as spiritual as you thought, or others think, or others think, mm -hmm. um, that depends. Uh, if we are saying that there is unrepentant carnality, but we're talking about unrepentant where it's just like, no, it's just me. Mm -mm. And so when they come to church, they're morphing into something else. I think that's dangerous. Yeah, you answered it perfectly. I don't think I need to say, add anything to it, but I feel that it's, that's definitely a discussion. Like I feel you need to speak to the person if you notice something that is not adding up to the way you think they, they should be. Then you speak to someone that you're, you know, you're close to, if it's an older brother, older sister, or even the pastor of the church. Um, there's always people around you that you can get advice from and I think that's very important. Yeah, I think you said a, a good thing there where you like speak to the person. So yeah. uh, maybe, you know, God has brought you into their life and you're helping them. We're not talking about missionary dating where you're just, no, no, you know, no. picking someone up and then you're <laughs> going to get them saved, discipled, no. mm -hmm. sanctified so you can marry them. <laughs> but what we're saying is, is that um, if you see something and you mention it to that person, how do they respond? Because mm -hmm. they may repent and be like, you know, I've never seen that or no one's ever told me that. Right. Or um, I didn't really see it was an issue until now we're in a relationship. And they can repent mm -hmm. and they can change. But if they're unrepentant and stubborn and living a double life, then I would run. Yeah. That, that, uh, I'd put it on pause, definitely. That one has yeah. to, that's pause. Yeah, definitely. Be careful. Are we done? Yeah. We're done. Okay. <laughs> We're done. Appreciate everybody. Okay. Ah. Uh, we said Ooh. we was going to do this. Yeah. So people are asking us about books. So okay. these are two books. 
Uh, and so, um, what's this? Gary Smalley, I think that's how you say it. Uh, and so basically this guy wrote book, one for the man, one for the woman. This mm -hmm. is the man one. Mm. And that's the woman one. That's the woman one. That's the woman one. Get focused, yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so um, the man one, if he only knew what no woman can resist. That's mm. what you put on there. I, I haven't read this for years. I'll be honest with you, I haven't read this book for years. But I believe there was some good stuff in it. And that's your book, isn't yeah. it? I didn't read yours. Oh yeah, if it's a woman version, it's like for better or for best. Definitely, if you can, Gary Smalley, Smalley is, is, is definitely a, um, a good book to get, definitely. I so recommend. yeah, so we recommend these two books. Mm -hmm. So there you go. We're trying to, um, pull out some other books. Yeah, so um, last thing is, don't forget Jesus loves you. If you're saved, stay saved. Uh, you know, stay in your word, stay in prayer. If you're not saved, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, in the link there will be a, uh, uh, sorry, in the comments below, there will be a link to uh, a prayer. Pray that prayer, call upon Jesus. Even if you don't pray that prayer to say, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes, I've made relationship mistakes. I'm telling you, God wants to save you. He loves you. He sent Jesus for you. And uh, if you have Christ in your life, he will get you through all of these relationship ups and downs. But if you're not saved, I want to tell you, even the best advice is not going to help you in the long run. Because one day, we're all going to die and stand before Jesus. And so give your life to him yes. while you can. And with that, peace. Bye.